Whoa. <laughs> My glasses were dirty. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. So this is video two of my BFRB awareness series. What are we talking about here? Well, yesterday, which was October 1st, I posted my first video in my BFRB awareness series. If you have not checked it out yet, please do so. I will link it in the description bar down below. And I'll also have one of those like card thingies in one of these corners, I don't know. How do you YouTube? We'll figure it out. So in today's video, I kind of want to share my story with trichotillomania, how I discovered I had it, why I do it, when I do it. First, let's talk about trichotillomania. What is it? The definition of trichotillomania is the pulling out of body hair anywhere on your body. So head hair, eyebrows, eyelashes, arm hair, pubic hair, anywhere you have hair and it's being pulled out subconsciously, it's trichotillomania. For me personally, it's head hair. I pull out my head hair all the time. So here is my hair completely freshly washed. There's no, no product in it whatsoever. And you can see that I do have some very fine, thin hair. And I have some spots where it's very, very thin. And these are the spots where I pick the most. So this would be like right here above my ear. That's kind of a big place where I pick and pull. Um, right here on the top of my crown, I pull a lot from this area and on the other side of my head down here. So although it may not look like I have a huge amount of hair loss, trust me, <laughs> <laughs> it is very significant. They're not like bald spots where there's like no hair whatsoever, but there are places where it's very, very thin. I don't necessarily do it for like a soothing or a calming situation. I don't really do it because I'm feeling anxious or nervous. I feel like I do it out of boredom and it's just gotten to be a bad habit. I have a lot of energy. I have a very high energy personality where I just, I have to keep my body moving. And because I don't have, if I don't move my body enough, this hand starts to just kind of take control and go on a little adventure all around my head and pull out lots of little friends along the way. Like I mentioned in my video yesterday, I have been doing this forever. I have been doing this since I was a very little girl. I remember in high school taking tests and pulling like crazy. I remember one time very vividly taking a test, it was probably finals in high school, and I have my backpack like on the ground in, next to me in my desk, at my desk. But I remember taking my test and when the test was done, um, I looked down to like, you know, grab up my bag and put all my stuff in there and it's like covered in hair. It is absolutely covered in hair and I have to like, so, I'm so embarrassed so I like sweep everything up and it's like creates like almost a ball of hair and I shove it in my backpack and I run out of the classroom. I used to like bite like crazy the cuticles, like the, the top skin parts on my nails till they bled. So again, like that is more of this BFRB behavior of like kind of doing these repetitive bodily grooming things until you start hurting yourself. And it wasn't until I started doing more nail polish stuff, whether it was putting pictures up on Instagram or making YouTube videos that I stopped biting my cuticles because I didn't want to ruin my fingers and my nails for pictures. But the hair stuff never truly went away. I know I do it while I watch TV. I know I do it while I read books, when I'm um, on the internet, when I'm driving, basically any time when my body is kind of focused on something else, like if my mind is focused on something else, that's when this little fella comes out to play and he starts fussing around in my hair. How I discovered that I had trichotillomania is a crazy story. It wasn't until probably about a month ago that I actually discovered I had trichotillomania. I had just started making YouTube videos again after a summer hiatus. I was getting really upset at what I was seeing. It wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm so depressed, but I was noticing that my hair was looking extremely thin. My hair was just in really bad shape and I was getting really upset about it. I was on YouTube trying to find videos and uh, help with like how to manage find a thin hair in my suggested video place or whatever. Some trichotillomania videos popped up. And I'm like, trichotillomania, like I didn't even know what it was. I didn't even know how to say it. I'm like, what's this trichotillomania? It wasn't until I saw a video that was like some ABC Dateline report or whatever. And it said like women who pull their 
women who pull out their hair and can't stop it, or women who pull out their hair and don't know why, or something to that effect. Like that was the t title of the video. And all of a sudden it hit me, I'm like, pulling out your hair. I'm like, I pull out my hair all the time. Like I pull it out all the time. So I clicked on the video. It then led me to other links of trichotillomania and it was mostly girls here on YouTube just sharing their stories about trichotillomania. So I started watching all of these videos and before I know it, I have this like overwhelming wave of emotion and I start crying. I'm sobbing and Ch my husband Chaz comes in. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, I think I have a problem. We start talking about it and I tell him everything about how how I pulled my hair as a little girl and how I still pull out my hair today. First thing out of his mouth was how can I help? And it was like, okay, like this is something I've always wanted to change about myself, but I never thought it was possible because it was just one of those things. Like it's like breathing to me. Like it literally feels like breathing to me and I don't know if I can change it. But watching all these videos on YouTube and watching all these girls like talk through their their, their methods of dealing with their trick and getting away from pulling and how they've been feeling that day and how many times have they pull that week. Like, it made me realize you can change and like change is possible. I think I've been doing pretty successfully up until this point. Now I still do tend to pull my hair, but I don't have like these pull sessions where I kind of sit down and I zone out and I'm pulling like crazy. Those things have definitely diminished significantly since I've become aware of the fact that I have trichotillomania. Now a lot of these tips that I'm gonna share with you today are the things that I've been doing myself over the past month and I'm not saying that I've seen like instant results and I'm not saying that I'm cured but I've definitely seen like a change as far as how frequently I'm pulling and like how many hairs I've been pulling every single day. I am very very new to this. I'm still learning and I'm still researching and I'm still finding new ways but because this is BFRB Awareness Week and because I feel so passionately about this I just want to share with you the tips and tricks that I have learned so far regarding trichotillomania and the things that have helped me stop pulling. Obviously my first tip would be to get professional help. Professional help is definitely like the goal in all of this but I understand that it's hard to find a doctor that works right with you, insurance and whatnot so there are some things that you can do yourself and until you get to the point where you can see a professional. The first step that I went through was to recognize when I pull. Recognize the moments when I'm pulling and take a mental note of it. Notice when it is that you're pulling. And like I said, for me, it's when I have these kind of, I don't know, processing moments when I'm watching a movie, when I'm reading a book, when I'm driving in the car, when I'm sitting at the computer. These times when my mind is already like occupied and for some reason this hand just goes out all on its own. So step Step two in my process was then to redirect that energy towards something that wasn't going to harm me. So this is when I started looking into finding toys to play with. Simple little toys in your hand that are malleable or squishy or just fidgety toys that can help redirect that energy from going up into here to bringing it down to a safe place that's not going to harm you. I'm going to be doing a whole video about the different trick toys that I like to use so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, about like the different toys that I use. I'm simply gonna say that definitely using fidget toys to help keep your hands busy instead of going up in your hair is a big, a big help. Other ways that I like to redirect that energy in my hands is to take on small hand crafting projects, so knitting or crocheting, and this is where I become a huge advocate for nail painting because it takes both of your hands to do it and then you have to wait a good like 10 minutes before your fingernails are dry. And on top of that, I never really wanted to then put my fingers in my hair because I was afraid it was going to ruin my manicure. Whenever my husband and I sit down to watch TV, I will pull out my nail polish stuff and honestly like I am pull free for at least two hours while I'm doing my nails. So I really, really love manicures and nail polish to kind of help distract your hands from going into your hair. So then my next step in the process, if the toys and you know the, the different hand distractions aren't working 
working and I'm still finding myself pulling, then I have to remove myself from the situation. So normally in these scenarios, it's because I've been sitting at my computer for over two hours. I need to get up. And so you'll get up and I'll move around and I'll, you know, dust or I'll clean up or I'll do something else for a couple of hours and I'll be fine. So that is something that I've definitely noticed. If the toys aren't working anymore, it means I have to get up and move my body. <laughs> Tip number four definitely rides on the coattails of step number three would be exercise. I am currently training for a half marathon and I cannot tell you how many benefits I have been seeing from running almost every single day. To just be clear, before I started training for my half marathon, I was doing nothing. I maybe went to the gym once a month. I maybe went to Zumba like every two or three months. Like I was not a very like exercise conscious person, but then I got the gumption to start training for a half marathon. And I cannot tell you how many benefits I've been able to see from running every single day. And the first one is definitely that my trichotillomania is not as intense. I don't find myself pulling my hair as often. And this works for my personality type a lot because I have a lot of high energy. I need to keep moving my body, otherwise I get depressed, otherwise I get anxious, and so moving my body and getting that energy out definitely, definitely helps. But again, it's gonna be different for each person. Either way though, exercise is always a good thing, so even if you're not a super high energetic person, it would still really benefit you just to get out and go for a walk, especially if you find yourself really having a hard time with trichotillomania or you're pulling a lot. It might not be a bad idea just to go outside and walk around the block anyway. Tip number five goes along with this high energy thought process. And for me personally, that's eliminating sugar and caffeine, or at least limiting the amounts of those foods that I eat. I notice that when I eat sugar, I get really, really jittery. And again, I just get all this energy in my body and I can't release it. And so it just goes right into my hair. I'm not a huge caffeine drinker, but when I do take caffeine every now and then, usually it's in soda form. Again, I get super jittery and I can't stop. And if I'm sitting at the computer, I'm like going in my hair like crazy and I'm pulling like mad. So I would think that for most people, it would be a good idea to kind of just limit the amount of sugar and caffeine test it out, see how it goes, maybe try it for a week and see if you're not pulling as much or at least see if you don't have the need to pull as much because for me, it totally made a difference. And then the last tip that I have is just accepting the behavior. I feel like the more I tried to fight it and the more I'm just like, oh, you're just so awful because you do this to yourself and you're ruining your hair and it's all your fault, blah, blah, blah. The more negativity I got about pulling and the more negativity I felt about myself about pulling, it became so much harder to stop and it became so much harder for me to even want to stop because I just felt like garbage. Accepting the behavior and realizing that yes, I have trichotillomania, I pull my hair all the time, just accepting that is a huge weight off your shoulders. Along with kind of accepting the fact that you have trichotillomania, it's also like important to recognize that it might not ever go away. I know this is kind of like, oh, that's very doom. <laughs> that's a doom kind of aura, but it's true. If you reach out to the BFRB community, especially those with trichotillomania, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's just, it's gonna be one of those things. It is going to be so hard. And for some of us, it might not ever truly go away. And that's gonna be really hard to accept. But I feel like if you go into it, like starting with the idea that, you know what, this is not going away. <laughs> this is something that probably will be a part of me for the rest of my life, but I'm not gonna let it hurt me anymore. And I'm gonna try and find a way to make it so that I have control over it and that it doesn't have control over me. So it's definitely gonna be a struggle. It's going to be very, very difficult, but luckily, the BFRB community, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, is just so incredibly understanding, which is why I have so much hope about my trichotillomania, because there are so many people in this community who feel the same way I do, who have the same issues that I do, who have the same problems that I do, and together we can be a resource and we can be 
cheerleaders for each other. We can like comfort one another and strengthen one another to help us make these changes that we want to see. Those are my tips. I really, really hope that this video has been helpful to some of you and I hope it's been able to answer some questions. As usual though, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I am trying really hard to stay on top of the comments and to make sure that I'm like answering them in a timely fashion, but I'm gonna be honest with you, comments and me do not go along well. I read them all, don't get me wrong. I read every single one of them, but responding to them, takes some time. So that is my uh, trick video for today. Make sure and stick around because we've, we've got two more trick videos coming down the mountain and it's gonna be really, really good. But that is my video for today, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure and subscribe to my channel if you are new and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!